to the Super Bowl began in Buffalo. But they didn't exactly start the championship chase in mid-season form as the offense seemed sluggish and slightly out of sync. Buffalo appeared lifeless until the Bills' special teams provided a spark. Back from center, and the punt is blocked! It is blocked! And it is battle for the Bills' Rookie Jamie Williams blocked a punt, and Scott Norwood kicked four field goals. Drop it through there, Scotty! Drop it through there, Scotty! Frank Reich will spot it. There's the put down. The kick is long enough again, and this time it is good! In the fourth quarter, Buffalo led by six points, but before the capacity crowd could rest, assured of victory, the Bills' defense laid to rest Indianapolis's passing attack. And here's a pass coming up. George is hit, and a fumble on the play, and a loose ball. It is still loose. Let's see. Did the Bills get it? Yes, they did. After taking away the ball, Cornelius Bennett took out the Colts' quarterback. Although Buffalo cruised to its third consecutive opening day victory, the following week would not entail smooth sailing. With six straight wins over the Dolphins, one might have expected a pleasant forecast for the Bills. Instead, Buffalo turned the ball over three times to set up Dolphins' scores, and the Bills never recovered. Buffalo hadn't lost a game by more points since the strike of 1987, and everyone wondered if the bickering from days gone by would be back. Before a national audience in the Meadowlands, the Bills blew out the Jets and put their differences from the past to rest. Trailing 7 to nothing, Jim Kelly ignited Buffalo's offense. 
Guard John Davis, number 65, and tackle Howard Ballard, number 75, made the blocks that set Thurman Thomas ablaze. Thomas scorched the Jets' defense for 214 yards as the Bills scored 23 unanswered points. In 1990, Buffalo's rushing attack could be summed up in two words, Thurman Thomas. The game plan is simple, open up a little hole in the line and allow Thomas to go to work. Thomas led the AFC in rushing and was second in touchdown scored. For the second straight season, he was the NFL's leader in yards from scrimmage. Thomas bore a huge share of Buffalo's offense and helped lead his team to the AFC Championship, a run to the title that began for the Bills in Week 4 against 1989's defending champions. Well, you played some thrillers. <laughs> now you know for dear life. Well, well, we'll win them. Well, yeah, we're fortunate to win. Crazy game. It would be the craziest game of the season. By grinding it out, Denver kept control of the ball and the score. off here to Sewell and he goes in standing up. All right. For two quarters, Denver's mastery over Buffalo seemed like child's play. Okay, men, we dominated for 30 minutes. We got to go hard this second half. Let's don't give them a chance to get back in. Let's go. Let's go. In the second half, the Bills found a way to turn the game and their season around. Threatened by the blitz, Denver failed to pick up nose tackle Jeff Wright, who stalled the Broncos' rushing attack. They're also going to be ready in pass protection as they're bringing this guy down hard and looping Smith. Hey, baby. I'm down there. We're going to put the heat on them now. It'll be third and 11. We're going to put some heat on them. It may be cold in Buffalo, but we're going to heat it up, baby. The Bills were indeed blazing and ready for, what's that called, Bruce? Oh, I forgot. Hammer time. Bills ready to tee off here. Here they come. The Bills have the ball. Down at the 10 yard line. What a play. There's a run by Don. In only 77 seconds, a nerve-wracking turnabout occurred as the Bills scored three touchdowns. Elway waits for the snap, backs up in the pocket. He throws, it's deflected and intercepted by the Bills. Never before had the 
bills burn so brightly for such a brief period of time. They have Kenneth Davis in as the tailback, and it is Kenneth Davis running, cutting back, touchdown! He ran in standing up, incredible! The Bills earned their victory with a script that only Hollywood could have written. Very unusual game. And uh, I, told, I told our player, I'll say, if you don't quit, sometimes you get lucky. The 4 0 Raiders' luck ran out when they traveled to Rich Stadium. Just 10 minutes away from remaining undefeated, L.A. fell victim to another fourth quarter Buffalo barrage. And it's rallied to score 24 points in the fourth quarter. In the end, it seemed the Raiders couldn't even get their hands on the ball. Focus was once again in a familiar spot. Trailing in the second half, the Bills' defense stopped the Jets from scoring another touchdown, setting the stage for a third straight come-from-behind win. That's just all with the ball, baby! Well, he waits again. He throws long this time, and it is caught! He's on his way for a touchdown! What a great catch! This time it came down to Buffalo's final play. Put it in the end zone! Put it in the end zone! Come on! Put it in there! Kelly waiting. Here's Kelly to throw. Looking. Can't find anyone. Now he throws. Touchdown! Yeah. 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 But I, I, I don't want none of that stuff next week. Uh, hopefully we'll come out very strong at the beginning and continue it through the, the rest of the game. Uh, we don't like these type of uh, close games, and uh, you know we're looking forward to next week. It's a great football team with a lot of moral fiber and a lot of character, and they showed it. And I think those who say that they don't have it, and there are who do and who wait for them to stumble, uh, ought to examine their own character. Once scrutinized by teammates and fans, Jim Kelly answered his critics by delivering a winning hand when the big money was on the table. Kelly ran the no-huddle offense with the flair and precision that made him the league's most efficient passer. He harnessed his arm strength to concentrate on driving the ball into the seams of the zone. His targets included a trio of talented tight ends and Keith McKellar, Butch Roll, and Pete Metzelar's number 88. More quality receiving depth came from Don Beebe, number 82. But in 1990, the big play deep strikes came from Andre Reed and James Lofton. With the league's best combination of foot speed and body control, Reed has the ability to make every catch lethal. In only his sixth professional season, Reed is already Buffalo's all-time leader in catches, yardage, and touchdowns. In 1990, he was finally freed from double coverage because of the re-emergence of James Lofton, number 80. 
Against New England, Kelly's pass catchers couldn't be corralled. They roamed free through the secondary and helped Kelly complete 70% of his passes. For the first time in five games, the Bills never trailed, and the only miracle finish necessary was the one that brought Don Smith down in the end zone. After seven weeks, Buffalo was 6-1 and one and tied with Miami atop the AFC East. The Bills moved to the beat of their own drum. They know winning is simple, but not easy. I've coached almost 40 years right now. When I first started coaching, I felt that to win, you had to run and stop the run. Nothing has changed. If, Bis if uh, Bennett gets on the outside and Smith gets on the inside, look for the cross, okay? Look for the cross right in here now, okay? Specialization, I think, makes those players on defense more aware and more cognizant of the importance of what they do. They're catching us in down here or down there, okay? Just push like as hard as you can. Just push, tackles, push. Stay there and push. I don't care about nothing else, okay? I think the game becomes more refined as coaches point out the great value of takeaways. And our, our formula is simple. Pursuit plus gang tackling equals takeaways. Buffalo's defense features players that possess the ability to bury opponents in a blizzard. We kind of turn it up a notch or two, and I don't, I don't know how in the world we do it, but somehow or another, we turn it up a notch or two. Taking the ball away in Buffalo is known as Hammer Time. Hammer Time to me is big plays on defense. Elway waits. Bills ready to tee off here. Here they come. And Elway is hit and sacked. You do something to disrupt the offense, and that's that's hammering down on them. Uh, you, you get on them and you pound on them. You never let them get back up. I mean, you just keep beating down on them until you can't see the head of the nail anymore. It's, it's just about an inch down into the wood, and you just keep, keep pounding and keep pounding. Buffalo pounded the Browns with their worst home loss ever. The front seven of Bruce Smith, Jeff Wright, Leon Seal, Shane Conlon, Ray Bentley, Daryl Talley, and Cornelius Bennett, number 97, shut down all passing lanes by redirecting the path of the ball. Cleveland didn't score a single point, and when Darrell Talley turned his second interception into a 60-yard touchdown, the win became the largest margin of victory in Bill's history. In 1990, Buffalo discovered new ways to find success, and nowhere was this more evident than with its special teams. Let's be smart now. We're going to take you back out here. We're going to go right or left. Check with me if you're looking for that cross. All right, Let's, get Let's get it down. Let's get it down. For the fourth straight year, the Bills' kickoff coverage was rated best in the NFL. Led by pro bowler Steve Tasker, they allowed less than 16 yards a return. Dwight Drain, Mark Pike, Carlton Bailey, Gary Baldinger, and Hal Garner, number 99, helped deliver the crushing blows. And when the ball came free, every member of the team gave their all to make the recovery. Against the Cardinals, Tasker made the tackle on a fumbled snap to set up one touchdown. Then ran under Rick Tootin's perfectly placed punt to recover another loose ball. While special
special teams contributed several timely turnovers, the most auspicious play was courtesy of the Bills' offensive line. Center Kent Hull, guards Jim Richer and John Davis, and tackles Will Wolford and Howard Ballard provided the protection that allowed Kelly to complete nearly 69% of his throws, despite a 29 mile per hour wind. Different receivers caught touchdown passes as the Bills became a scoring machine. <music> Kenneth Davis put the final points on the board with a run that left a lasting impression on the men up front. Those backs were working awfully hard. I've never seen them work that hard before. And when he's working that hard, it makes our job a lot easier. A lot of times they were just bringing three men, and uh, when that happens, I start, he, he won't sit back there and eat a sandwich. It's our job to protect him. Kelly even had enough time to find Tasker open for the first touchdown of his career. The Bills beat Phoenix for their seventh win in a row, and all Buffalo had good reason to be proud. Just prove what kind of fans we have. We have the best fans in the league. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We got some great fans. My fans, we love you. Well, see, our fans are great. You know, they come out, they get excited, and they come out and they cheer before the game. They're there, ready to go. And when you see that, when you walk out of that tunnel, you know, right now, here comes the electricity. All they have to do is plug you in. Yeah! Buffalo's happening now. We're on the moon now. The fields are happening now. They're making it happen now. We got the spirit. A lot of spirit, yeah. We got the spirit. Just watch it happen now. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. The call to glory came for the Bills secondary in a week 11 rematch against the Patriots. And stepping into center stage was number 31, James Williams, Buffalo's 1990 first round draft pick. At midseason, Williams vaulted into the starting lineup and benefited from the leadership of Buffalo's veteran secondary. Anchor is Sarah. Sarah going to slam. All communication lines were also clear on the offense. Thurman Thomas followed his blockers to pick up 165 yards and two touchdowns. With a 14-point lead in the final period, the Bills knew there was only one way they could be beaten which made it tee-off time for Buffalo's pass rush. In anchor 46, you know that's a stay. You know what that is, that's slam force, okay? Because it's going to be loud and, and you ain't going to be able to get the call, so you know what the call is on them. The Bills secondary of Leonard Smith, Nate Odoms, Mark Kelso, Kirby Jackson, and David Poole, number 29, kept the Patriots out of the end zone to ensure Buffalo's second shutout of the season. In their last three games, the Bills outscored the opposition 101-14, to and one had to wonder how long could they keep up this thundering pace. Always the opposition looks bigger. Always. Always, to me too. Me too. They always look bigger and their quarterbacks look better. And uh, I, I, I've already learned that that's the way it looks, you know. When Marv Levy took over in 1986, most of Buffalo's opponents were better than the Bills. Levy inherited a team that had won just seven of its last 46 games. But in just two seasons, everything came into focus. Everybody who observes us, uh, media, fans, um, other teams and ourselves say, you know, they are, a re they are a markedly better team this year than they were a year ago. In 1988, the Bills won their division and advanced to the AFC Championship game. 
They brought Buffalo to the edge of their dreams, but in the end, couldn't make it to the big date. This was forgivable considering they bounced back to repeat as division champs in 1989. Only the inability to win in postseason was a lingering headache that finally led to heartache. How long would it be before history repeated itself? The Bills traveled to Houston on a Monday night in the midst of an eight-game winning streak. For three quarters, Buffalo held the lead and Warren Moon under wraps. But in the end, the Bills finally ran out of steam. Buffalo didn't buckle under defeat. Instead, they concentrated on finding a focal point to channel their aggression. couldn't manage a first down, the Bills' feet never touched the ground. Looks, he throws, he's got a man there, it is Lofton at the 45, at the 40, 35, 30, down to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, he scores! What a play! In the first quarter, Kelly completed all eight of his passes for 229 yards. Lofting collected five for 174 yards to move up to third on the all-time NFL list for receiving yardage. The Bills scored on their first four possessions and looked invincible. The raucous roar in Rich Stadium was soon silenced, for even Buffalo's defensive death grip couldn't keep Randall Cunningham from rallying his team. Here's the third of which is fired, and Cunningham on play action. He's firing, and it's complete for a touchdown to Keith Jackson. Get Everybody get 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 job and get on the Clinging to a seven-point fourth-quarter lead, Mike Lodish sacked Cunningham. In the end, the Eagles were trampled by this thundering herd. I have to give a lot of credit to our, our coach. He comes up with these uh, schemes, and, and, and they work well for us. And, uh, yeah, well, I tried. But uh, they, they, they work well for us, and I, I have to give it to him. You know, when, when you can devise something and it actually works, you know, you can't say enough about that. It was an innovative scheme that unleashed the punishing pass rush of Bruce Smith on the Colts. Buffalo blitzed, which gave Smith an unobstructed path to the passer. By game's end, Colt quarterback Jeff George had nowhere to hide. The Bills dominated right from the start. Jim Kelly hit Andre Reed with two scoring strikes in the first quarter, and it was all the points Buffalo needed to earn a playoff berth. Football was meant to be played for Buffalo is with a no huddle attack. Kelly passes the relief on the left side on a screen pass. It is complete to the 30. Big break. 35 40, 45 50. The Giants are going to have to hustle to get to him inside the 30. Knocked out of bounds by Williams. Right. 
I count a game. Who do you hit? Three yards in the cloud of dust, let's have it. An offense that never lets up and puts points on the board. On to the left corner and cutting back. Baron Thomas dives in. Dropping back, looking, throws, and it is caught by Reed, and he's in for the score. Andre Reed. Today's a hitter's game. Up front. Let's show him what the we got. Huh? Good, good, luck good, luck good luck to you today. Good luck to you today. Buffalo's defense had grown accustomed to protecting leads, and following the first quarter, ball carriers were kept out of the end zone. They're holding the ball deeper than they've been doing before. They're playing men back on us all the way because they know we run well. They know we run well. Listen to me. All right? Hold in. Smith listened, but as quickly as the Bills took control, the advantage swung back to New York. Kelly is hurt. He is hurt horribly. And holding his left knee. Buffalo needed to find a way to replace its most lethal weapon. Hey, Frank! 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 Are you Frank and Jay? Let's do it! Let's do it now! Let's go! Frank Wright provided a steady hand and put the Bills into position to kick a fourth quarter field goal. But the Giants still had a chance to win the game in the final seconds. Purple Hawk, go down with that intercept. Purple Hawk, Purple Hawk. Let's go, deep, big ball, deep, baby. Back to throw. Looks, and he throws, and it is incomplete, and the Bills will get the ball and win the game. He tried to hit Troy Kyle. The Bills are going to win it at Giant Stadium. Yes, 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 yes! Hello, everybody. This is Van Miller with Ed Rutkowski and Pete Weber. And this is the game, maybe the biggest in this franchise's history, as the Bills and the Dolphins square off with the AFC East title at stake and home advantage right through possibly to the Super Bowl. While all Frank Reich wanted was to deliver a strong showing, Bills fans called for the kind of performance that made him 3-0 and as a starter last season. This is where it gets tough and the traffic gets heavy. Right will throw. Looking, looking, throws. Touchdown! James Lofton! Deep in the end zone! Lofton's score gave Buffalo a 7-0 lead. And on the Bills' first possession of the second half, Wright threw a picture-perfect pass to Andre Reid. Like Andre in these kind of situations, especially on corner patterns. Here is Wright the throw. And it is caught by Reid for a touchdown! I like an eagle better on that, even though they're fanning the eagle's still better. Yeah, because he can work, yeah, work you work you outside and hit it hard, because you can still work underneath, you'll work underneath, yeah. and he can work over the top of the switch on it. All right, good job. There's the snap, he's back to the ball. He is sacked in there by Jeff Wright. Baby, yeah, well, that's the first of many today, brother. Defense! Defense! In the fourth quarter, the Dolphins trailed by 10 points, and the Bills' defense made sure they never narrowed the gap. Thomas sealed the win and set the stage for the season's biggest post-game bash. Thurman Thomas goes in standing up. The Bills have driven for a score. Though the 
Buffalo faithful may break a commandment now and then, they are also helping to create one for opponents. Thou shalt not win in Buffalo. How sweet it is! They did get the goalpost? Yeah, one horse, too. Okay, well, that's too bad, because we're, we're going to need some more. However, the Bills didn't get a chance to use them all that much in the regular season finale. Buffalo sleepwalked through most of the game, and in the end, it meant nothing more than the opportunity for supporting players like Gail Gilbert to loosen their limbs. Playoff time in Buffalo can usually guarantee two things. First, unaccommodating weather. And secondly, vocal and fiercely loyal natives in the stands. But Buffalo fans welcome both almost as much as they welcomed the return of Jim Kelly. From the first play of the game, he made people forget the knee brace on his injured leg and marvel at the magic in his arm. Kelly stretched his pass catchers to new heights and stretched the Dolphin defense the entire length of the field. Reed at the 20, down to the 15, the 10, 5, touchdown, Andre Reed! The Bills have scored on an electrifying play! No huddle offense, Kelly to throw again. Now he throws it long downfield for Lofton, and he's got it! He makes the catch! Kelly in the snow, backpedaling in the pocket. There's the throw long. Reed is open. He's got it at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, and down to the five-yard line. Using the hurry-up offense exclusively, the Bills held the Dolphins in a vice grip, and Miami's inability to substitute freely made for mismatches like safety Lewis Oliver in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Andre Reed. As a result, the Bills scored the first five times they had the ball. Drops back to pass. Can't find anyone. Now throws, and it's good to Lofton, and he runs it for the touchdown. The Bills have been unstoppable so far in this game. They have been a scoring machine so far in this first half in the Snow and Rich Stadium. The Dolphin defense simply couldn't stop Kelly, who continued to hit his receivers in stride. And when Buffalo got near the goal line, tackle Will Wolford simply bullied open a hole for running back Thurman Thomas. While the Bills and their fans frolicked in the snow, the Dolphins seemed ready for the showers. Kelly in the shotgun on second and seven from the 27 throws. It's good there. It is complete to Reed, and Reed runs in for the touchdown. And Rich Stadium has erupted in pandemonium. The Bills made their final touchdown look easy as running back Thurman Thomas picked up the blitz and then helped with a double team block as Kelly was given enough time to wait for Reed to break in the clear. Buffalo was returning to the AFC Championship and wanted to earn the respect that some Bills felt they deserved. You know, I was kind of ticked off about the way they talk about us. You know, I really don't think at this point in time that Miami really gives us a res the respect that we deserve, really, because uh, the way they shoot off at them off and saying that, you know, they didn't play well the last time we were up here. Well, I think they played pretty damn good today, but they got their ass kicked. <laughs> And don't be blue when you come to Buffalo. We got a game day for you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Van Miller in Orchard Park, New York. And the road to the Super Bowl goes through Rich Stadium. It is the Bills and the Raiders looking to trade the cold and the snow of Western New York for a trip to the balmy breezes of Florida and the Super Bowl in Tampa. Come on, sweetie. A club 
record 80 plus thousand showed up to see some serious headbanging in the AFC Championship. drive the Bills were unstoppable. Looks like he wants to throw. He will. He looks. He looks. He rolls right. He can go himself. Oh, touchdown on Ray Reed. Wide open in the end zone. When a penalty and a bad snap threatened to break their rhythm, Kelly simply did what he does best. He improvised. Rolls to the right. Still on his feet. Now throws. It's good to Lawson. He runs it. second touchdown, the Raiders got trapped on an inside stunt. Thomas occupied the vacated area and broke a handful of tackles on his way to the end zone. And I know the Raiders can poo poo this no huddle off and saying that they've seen it before, but they've never seen it the way the Bills run it. What the Raiders were about to witness was the fury of the herd. Tally picked off the first of a record six passes for the Bills, and the gates swung wide open. It was a day when everything went Buffalo's way. Kelly's offensive line kept the pressure off, and his pass catchers worked free. Davis tied an NFL postseason record with three rushing touchdowns. It was time for the long-awaited overdue celebration to commence. Go pack your bag! Go pack your bag! Yeah, baby! Woo! <laughs> Goals to win, not just to go. Hey. <laughs> We're going to the show in Tampa! The AFC Championship was a long-awaited day for Bills owner Ralph Wilson. Don't be misled by the size of the score. 
because you got another river to cross. <laughs> In the Silver Anniversary Super Bowl, the favored Buffalo Bills set out to end the AFC jinx. But even a bruising pass rush couldn't prevent the Giants from delivering the first blow. Ball spotted. Looks like he had trouble with it. Puts it up. It is good. And the Giants are on the board. New York's Super Bowl defense featured just two down linemen, but in the Bills' second possession, this wrinkle did not deter Jim Kelly. A long throw downfield, and it is deflected and caught by Larson, and he's down the sideline and out of bounds at the eight-yard line. First down for the Bills. Boy, how many times have we seen James Lofton come up with that kind of a catch over his shoulder? That time it was deflected by the defensive back, Harry Williams. Great concentration by Lofton. And the ball comes down in his hands, and they are in scoring territory. By sacrificing men up front, the Giants were able to use six defensive backs against the Bills to clamp down quickly on all of Kelly's receiving threats forcing Buffalo to settle for the tying field goal. The put down, and the kick sails up, and it is good, and we are tied at three in the Super Bowl. As the second quarter began, Buffalo found itself in an unfamiliar position, tied with an opponent. But if the terrain was unfamiliar, the path to success was marked by two familiar bills, Thurman Thomas and Andre Reed. deja vu of the team's previous meeting, which made some Giants mad enough to spit. Smith and the offense put the Bills ahead. Buffalo's defense planned to put the Giants out of the game. Just don't get nothing up. First down's your key. You win on first down, huh? And you kick ass on third down. On second down, a special treat was on in second store. Down, he's gonna throw, and they're up for falls down. As aggressive as the Bills' pass rush was, they got a little help from the Giants on the safety. Hostetler actually tripped over his blocking back's leg, making him an easy target for Bruce Smith. But Hostetler cradled the football, preventing a fumble and a potential touchdown. Still, the Bills led 12 to 3 as the quarter wound down. You do something, you do something to, disrupt to disrupt the offense. The offense. You, you get on it, you pound on it, you never let them get, get back up. Back up. <laughs> Buffalo defense followed its creed by trying to drive Hostetler into the ground. 
There's going to be some sore football plays at the end of this game. This has been tough football. But while he may have been down for the count, Hostetler never threw in the towel. Baker's 14-yard catch was the game's only touchdown pass, and it cut the Bills' lead to only two points. I've coached almost 40 years right now. When I first started coaching, I felt that to win, you had to run and stop the run. Bills have not had the ball in this quarter, and the clock is running, and that's just the way the Giants want it. on the one and a half yard line. OJ is a down. Nine minute plus drive. This is what they want to do. Eat that clock, score a touchdown, keep that no huddle off the field. I was kind of ticked off about the way they talk about us, you know. From a distance, it appeared that the Giants were in control, but a closer look revealed that the balance of power was shifting back to the Bills. Thomas's 31-yard run on the first play of the final quarter helped give Buffalo a two-point lead and was the result of a total team effort. There's Kelly shotgunning, a running play. Thurman Thomas breaks it at the 25, still on his feet at the 20, gets down to the 15, the 10, the 5, and scores! Thurman Thomas has broken a 31-yard touchdown run, and the Bills have taken the lead! But led by Jeff Hostetler, the Giants embarked on a 14-play drive. With little time remaining, the Bills' defense could not afford to give up a touchdown. But punching the ball over from in tight is usually a given for the Giants' power football. However, Jeff Wright turned a first and goal at the three into a second and seven, and New York was forced to settle for three. This important to what? Drop it. It's good! And the Giants now take the lead, 20 to 19. At the ever dangerous Kelly's. Uh, now we have 2.16 to play, and this will be it. One more shot. Oh, and you wouldn't Jim want Kelly it. In the bill. You wouldn't want it any other way. No. Nope. You wouldn't want it any other way. 90 yards away from a touchdown. What a finish. What a finish to this Super Bowl. My goal is not to go to the Super Bowl. My goal is to win the Super, win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl.
eight seconds to play. Get ready. High drama here in the Super Bowl. Back, spot, in the air, stop the distance, baby. Where else Where would else you rather, rather be, be than, right than right here, here, here right, right now? Right now. It gives you goosebumps, and uh, it's it's hard for teams to come in here and have to deal with 80,000 strong and uh, scream like they do. I mean, they're great fans, and, and they're they're backing us. They backed us through the tough times, and, and they're here when we're having you know a good season. In 1990, the Bills enjoyed one of their best seasons ever, treating the world to the greatest Super Bowl ever played. Under present leadership, it won't be long until Buffalo brings home a silver trophy of its very own. 